We are back. We are back. We are back, baby. It is good to be back, y'all. We got through that break week. Now it is time for more gosh darn One Piece, I do declare. Yo, I am so glad that I decided to do this. I wasn't sure. After after my first review, I was like, I don't know. What if what if what if that was just like a fluke uh chapter and you know it's gonna just be mid thrawn out? No. Thank goodness. Because this chapter that we just got today is, woo -hoo 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 -hoo. it's got so much stuff in it. Holy moly, it's so good. What an amazing chapter this week. I took so many notes. Oh my goodness. I don't even know where to start. Chapter 1059, the Kobe incident, or at least that's what the scans are calling it. So the cover story is continuing on from last week. And just like I said, last chapter, Caesar is going to have a bunch of kooky stuff planned up. I said that. And guess what's happening? Katakuri and Oven are punching each other because of his hallucinogenic gas. This is another week. You know, more, more L's and L's on Katakuri, sadly. All the Katakuri stands are very, very not happy about all this, saying, oh my gosh, how, how? He's got future sight though, you know? I don't know how far up his future sight goes, but I don't see him knowing that the smoke that was engulfing him was hallucinogenic. I don't, I, I don't see him being able to predict that, I guess. So for the rest of this cover story, I'm not, I'm not sure where it's gonna go at this point. Like, obviously I think that Caesar and the Germa 6 uh, kids, I think that they're obviously gonna escape and that's it. A couple of months ago, part of the cover story showed these two mysterious figures, and a lot of people were saying, oh, that's one of the Blackbeard Pirates. Oh, that's Crocodile and Mr. One. And I was hoping that it would go one of those ways and it wouldn't just be the other Germa agents, but I think that's how it's gonna go at this point. Especially after the past two chapters, we can pretty much safely say that it wasn't the Blackbeard Pirates and that it wasn't Crocodile. Maybe there'll be some big epic twist in this cover story, but as far as I know, I'm, I don't know. Like I've been saying, this story going on is about the four emperors right now. Last week, we got a whole thing about one emperor, Buggy, and then this week we have the other three emperors all in it. That's crazy. The chapter starts off with Marco on somehow the Shanks pirate ships of all people. He sadly declines to join Marco's crew, saying he's too old and worn out. Sometimes it's hard to remember that Marco is actually older than Shanks because he's just so gosh darn handsome. Any, any chapter with Lucky Roo in it though, ooh, it's a good chapter. That part goes into a flashback into Wano. Oh my gosh, we're in Wano again. Ah, I thought we left. Now we are finally getting the conversation between Yamato and Luffy that we really should have had a couple chapters ago. It's very weird that we're having it now. I don't want to say that this part of the chapter is Oda backtracking. I have no idea if having this happen at this point in time was always a part of the plan. Having having this conversation happen after the technical end of Wano, I just I'd still just kind of find it weird. In this though, Yamato gives a much much better reason of why Yamato cannot join the Straw Hat crew. It's kind of the reason that most people were expecting, and it's a lot better than the weird reason that they gave the first time. It's because, you know, Momo and the Scabbards did not defeat Green Bull. They couldn't do it. It was because of Shanks and his big hockey burst that they were able to, to not all die out there. So it makes sense that Yamato would stay so that Wano could feel a lot safer. This part of the chapter really makes it seem like Yamato is actually going to eventually officially join, but 
if it takes that long, then it's just gonna be weird by the time, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to finish this entire story, and if we add another quote-unquote main character of the cast, and it's too late in, then I, I, I just don't know. I don't know how people are gonna feel about that. I like Yamato. I wouldn't mind Yamato being in the crew, like, or on the ship, having more interactions with her. She definitely needs more character development, but if the whole, oh, I am Odin gag is played off as, like, her, her shtick, her gag, and isn't, like, an actual part of her character development to stop doing that, then I don't want that. Marco and Luffy had a good heart-to-heart -heart conversation about the Summit War and about Ace, and I really like that a lot. And then after that, he gave his goodbye, which I know a lot of people were also asking for, because I don't think they interacted all that much during the actual uh, Wano arc. Now, Marco is heading to Sphinx Island, and a lot of people said that Luffy and the Straw Hats were going to go to Sphinx Island just because of weird map stuff and whatever, but I don't think that's gonna happen because they just said goodbye to each other and Marco's then going to Sphinx Island. So if the Straw Hats then are went next to Sphinx Island, then they would just be like, oh, hi again, you know? That's why I don't think that they're heading there next. I think that Old Baff is probably the next one, but we'll see. Marco keeps mentioning that he's too old and tired and worn out in this chapter, and I'm wondering if it's a coincidence that Rayleigh says a lot of similar things near the end of this chapter. I don't know. Now we get to the really good stuff. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad I started doing these reviews because once I read all of this, I was like, oh my gosh, I have so many things to say about this chapter. People have been waiting and speculating for years to know what happened with Boa Hancock when the Marines tried to invade her territory. We are finally being able to see what happened and I am not disappointed in the slightest. I don't, I don't even know where to start on this chapter, so I'm just gonna start with my boy Blackbeard. It is so awesome to have him here again! I don't know if anyone was expecting Blackbeard to come to Amazon Lily when the Marines were fighting her. A lot of people speculated that he was going to go to the Reverie, or that he was going to go to Wano, or that he was going to go to Whole Cake Island. I was hoping that he would go to Whole Cake Island, but it seems like he went to Amazon Lily of all places. It's definitely not what I expected, but I love it. <laughs> it looks like he brought Katarina Devon with him, which is good because we can lay so many weird, dumb theories to rest. Everyone was saying that Katarina Devon was at the Reverie and was actually Sabo, but was also actually Odin, but was also actually Cobra. And oh my gosh, so many gosh darn stupid Katarina Devon theories. Like, whatever, she's just right there. She ain't been doing nothing. They just been chilling. Whatever. Drop it. Gosh, Blackbeard is so cool. He's just a big old pirate with a big beard and a bunch of guns. No weird samurai or animal backstory. Just a big gosh darn pirate that goes, yeah. <laughs> Man, in hindsight, chapter 956 was wild. And we're just now getting all these answers today. A hundred chapters later, in chapter 956, Blackbeard says, pack your bags onto the ship. Why let the Navy reap the reward when I stay in to gain from this? And everyone was like, what is he talking about? Who is he talking about? Is he talking about Wano? Is he talking about Whole Cake? Is he talking about Alabasta? Now we know he was talking about Boa's Devil Fruit. He was talking about the Warlords. The Marine is hunting down all the Warlords and Blackbeard is like, no, nah, I mean, I might as well grab those guys while I'm at it. Makes sense. We get to see Boa in action and like she she's she's a heavy hitter. She's pretty gosh darn strong. In one single attack, she took out two Yonko commanders and one vice admiral at the same time, as well as so many other fodder. When Luffy was declared an emperor after Whole Cake Island, his bounty was lower than what Boa's is right now, so I think that she could be uh, considered an emperor, just like anyone else, with the power that she has. She just had more uh, crew members. I think that, I think that could totally be a thing. We finally also got to see Blackbeard's new bounty of 3.996 billion. This is more on the lines of what a you know, enemy for Luffy should be at this point in time. I thought that his two million bounty was pretty low 
comparatively. Like, Kid and Law have a bigger bounty than, than what he did, you know, a chapter ago. So, thank goodness they, they upped his bounty. I'm wondering what exactly he did to get his bounty upped. Because it looked like it was at this point in this flashback right now with this you know, skirmish with Boa, so this isn't the reason why his bounty went up. Something in between this chapter and, I guess, the last chapter, I guess a hundred chapters ago, something happened that doubled his bounty. I'm wondering if that'll be explained, or it's just because, oh, he's just been working, he's just been evil and whatnot. Just put it up, throw it up, throw it up. Big money, big money, big money, big numbers, big numbers, baby. Oh yeah, Kobe's there, by the way. Have I mentioned Kobe yet? <laughs> oh, Kobe's been taking a lot of L's recently. He He's trying his best. He's trying to do things as non-violently as possible. Like, good for him. Good for him being the good Marine. But, like, we need to see some feats from Kobe. We need to see him doing big stuff. Oh, Kobe, bless his heart. <laughs> It is good, though, seeing all of these classic characters from pre-time skip, you know, Boa, Blackbeard, Kobe, Rayleigh, all these people. It's so nice to see them again, actually doing stuff important to the plot of One Piece. We need to talk about these new pacifistas because this stuff is nuts. Apparently, they're called Seraphims. I know that the big secret plan to replace the pacifistas were like SSG. <gasps> Maybe those one of those S's is Seraphim. I don't know. Hopefully, we got one of the letters done. Hooray! These dudes are doing real big feats. They are blowing things up real good. This one dude cut a whole mountain in half. This is getting nuts. If these guys are gonna be like the in-game enemies for the Marines, then it's good, then we'll have some really good opponents to fight. There could be just these two, there could be seven of them. They may have like a hundred of them like at the end of Marine Ford. If they have like a hundred of these guys at the in the final war, then oh my goodness, this is going to be crazy. These new Seraphims seem to look like kid versions of the Warlords. You know that one picture in the SBS that we saw of all the Warlords as kids? It looks a lot like Boa, and then the other one with the sword looks a lot like Mihawk. At first I thought it looked more like Queen, like it was a little version of Queen. But then looking at the sword hilt and stuff, I'm starting to think it may actually be like a little tiny version of Mihawk. What I don't know is if... These are cybernetic uh, robots like the older pacifistas were or if they're just genetically enhanced clones or something like that. I know that we have cloning figured out from German 66 from what's his name from Judge. <laughs> He's figured out uh, cloning so I'm sure that Vegapunk can do something similar. Hopefully Oda is taking the Star Wars route and showing that a good old-fashioned clone is is better than a nasty battle droid. If he's if he's going that route, then oh, you know I'm in. You know I'm in. I don't know if this was confirmed or not, but we did see in the clash between the Seraphim and Blackbeard that Blackbeard does have armament hockey. I know a lot of people have been saying, oh, Blackbeard only has the really good devil fruits and that Blackbeard probably doesn't have any hockey, that he's only relying on devil fruits and that the way that Luffy is going to win is because he has good hockey and that Blackbeard won't. But it looks like he does have at least good armament hockey. Now, Conqueror's Hockey is the more bigger deal. A lot of people are saying that, like, he probably doesn't have that. I don't really care either or if he does, but he at least knows some hockey. In this cool, in this super awesome three-way standoff between Blackbeard and Boa and Kobe, we get Blackbeard talking about uh, making it possible for him to oust Ochoku. And this is usually the type of of dialogue that if you're like, you know, binge reading it from start to finish and not reading it week to week, you probably would just like read right over this. But I had, I had, I had to look up that like, cause I did not remember who that was. And apparently that's one of the like former rocks pirates. So apparently on full of lead beehive pirate Island a former rocks pirate was just hanging out there and Blackbeard oh, said, Hey, kick, kick, kick the curb, sir. I know that a lot of people are saying that Blackbeard and Rox 
have some sort of connection, but the fact that this is the second former Rocks pirate that Blackbeard has defeated is, is interesting to me. I wonder if that leads into him trying to defeat all of the other Rocks pirates for some reason, or I honestly have no idea. Also, he mentions Kobe being the hero of Rocky Port. I had to remember what this was. Apparently, they mentioned it a long time ago, and it's one of the reasons that Law became a Shichibu Khan. <sighs> Why did I try? Why did I try saying that? <laughs> Apparently Rocky Port is one of the reasons why Law became a warlord in the first place. Another like little detail that if you're just reading it from start to finish would not pick up. But you know, sometimes you read this and you're like, no, what, what, what event is this? Is this important? It probably is. I probably should go reread things and check on this. You know, check the wiki, dive into the wiki. Another classic pre-time skip character that then enters the picture, gosh darn Dark King Silver's Rayleigh, comes in and just scares Blackbeard away. This is like one of the many times that Blackbeard just runs away. He doesn't usually win. He usually just like gets a lot of good hits in and then runs away. It's crazy though that just like his clout alone, they didn't even fight. He just saw them and he was like, I don't even think I could beat him in all honesty. But just by seeing Rayleigh, Blackbeard was like, nope, I'm dipping. I'm a dip. Yeah, this coincides with earlier in the chapter with Marco being like, yeah, I'm, I'm old, I'm, I'm out of it. I probably can't, I can't keep up with these youngsters. It's just so interesting that it happened twice. I wonder if anyone else caught on to that. Oh, poor Kobe, can't you just have one equal fight? You're always put up against these people who are way stronger than you, so you're always gonna come across as weak. It's so sad. We need like a good actual equal fight for Kobe. It's always, it, he hasn't gotten one yet. We also get this bizarre, huge bomb drop that Shaggy, this one, you know, minor background character was the former empress of Amazon Lily all of a sudden. I looked up her name, Shaki Yaku, and just Google Translate, and apparently she's like a flower or something. That's what that's what that name means. I don't know how significant that is. I mean, I guess Amazon Lily, flower. That's all I got. I'm wondering how important this is and how important this character will be, or if it's just like just a little flavor text, just being like, oh nope, this 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 character, they're they they were important in in this way at some point in time. Just, just for the just for the funds, you know. Will this ever actually come up again? Will this be important to the bigger plot of One Piece? I have no idea. But I guess it's cool. I don't know. The world government has been taking L after L after L ever since the end of Wando, with the defeat of Green Bull, and then we found out last chapter that they could not defeat Buggy, and then in this chapter we found out that they could not defeat Hancock. Like, have they captured a single warlord yet? Maybe we'll find out. Like, the only one that's really left at this point is Weevil. So, that's that's like their last chance. That's your last chance to do your job, world government. You gotta get at least one of them. Come on. And then we ended the chapter with Kobe being kidnapped by Blackbeard. It's like, oh, my poor boy, he can't get anything. Everyone thought that... Boa was the one who's gonna be captured. And they also thought that Sabo was gonna be captured too. Those are like the big, two big theories that a lot of people had that would incite Luffy to eventually fight the world government is that, oh, either Boa Hancock is gonna be captured and he isn't gonna like that, or his brother Sabo is gonna be captured. And we have found out that the complete opposite half. Instead, two of his good friends, Kobe and Vivi, are the ones being captured and kidnapped. <laughs> That's just crazy. If this is an incitement for Luffy to go and fight Blackbeard, I wouldn't mind about that. I have a feeling that Luffy could probably just be like, oh, uh, Kobe's got this, he can do it, he's strong. But he said the same thing about Ace before Marineford, so maybe he's learned from his mistakes and isn't gonna say stuff like that anymore. Though with Vivi, he definitely will be like, nah, I'm on my way, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta fix this. Unless he's too busy adventuring or doing plot related things on Elbaf, who knows. Hopefully this whole abduction thing will be good for Kobe's character. You know, he's doing stuff in the story. He's going to be important in the future and that makes me happy. I like it when these older characters 
are set up to be important in the future. So Kobe and Vivi, two characters that I really do enjoy, are gonna be important in the future. And that'll be great. Either that or that'll make at least Garp enter the story. If Luffy's not gonna go and save Kobe, then hopefully at least Garp will. And then we get to see more Garp action, which is good. We need to see more of Garp doing cool things for sure. I'm wondering though, why Kobe is important to Blackbeard? Why he has abducted him and not just killed him in the first place? Because Kobe doesn't have a devil fruit to my knowledge. So there's no reason to get to him to take his devil fruit. And he's not that important of a of, of a marine. You know, he's just a captain. You know, Akainu definitely doesn't like him. So he's not that good of a hostage, I don't think. So I wonder what Blackbeard's plan is for Kobe, unless he knows that him and Luffy are friends, maybe that would make a difference? I have no idea. I guess we'll see. Hopefully this will be good stuff for Kobe though. If these chapters just keep coming like this, then oh my goodness, this will be an amazing final saga. But this could be like the past two intermissions in between the Wano acts to where, you know, once we go away from the Straw Hat stuff, we get all this otherworldly stuff. I'm hoping this is just what the rest of the series is, but this may be just one of those special two to three chapter big reveals type stuff. We're gonna find out soon because I'm sure that we're gonna find out where the Straw Hats are going to next, whether it be Sphinx or Elbaf or Full Lead, you know, or some new place. I don't honestly like some place new that's fun. We could be getting that or we could be getting more of the Saba flashback. That would also be good, but I don't really expect that. I really don't know what's gonna happen next chapter. It's we because we still don't have a objective or a place to go for the Straw Hats, we still don't really have a super clear idea of what every next chapter is going to be. It's still just a big surprise every single week and I love it, I love it, I love it. Let me know what y'all think, you know? If there's anyone here who thinks that everything I'm saying is stupid and that my theories are dumb and that I'm super wrong and mistaken on a bunch of stuff and you're more knowledgeable than me, uh, comment in there and let me know. <laughs> Thank y'all for watching. If any of y'all watch this, I do declare. Hopefully we'll be back next week. I don't think there's a break, so hopefully I'll be able to do another one real soon. That last break we had was super, super long, so I'm so glad that we don't have a break this week. We can get right into the goodness next week. So until then, I'll see y'all. I do declare.